Um, and we were going to have a look at a few stories, weren't we, this morning? I was very surprised by this, Bobby. Um, in, yeah. in 2021, we're having a look at the uh, Portuguese news in English here. In 2021, this is a headline for the Portugal news. Uh, wealthy families, there were almost 22,000 families in Portugal with annual gross incomes of more than 80,000 uh, euros, 16% more than in the previous year. That seemed to me like not that an impressive level of wealth in the country. What do you make of that? Well, I think um, for for the cost of living in Portugal, actually, it's 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 quite, you'd be very well off with that kind of money, as you know, um, with that kind of income. But I think actually what's True. really impressive yeah. was the percentage in growth of people going up to that, which is nearly 20%. And um, one fifth of the country, if you like, and, and if you think about the working population, um, the size of the working population versus the size of the population, um, yep. it's it's quite substantial. And I'm sure yes. most of it's probably in the private sector, um, or in the either the private sector, as in they're either self-employed or working for probably some of the international companies that have, have set up in Portugal. And I think that's why Portugal was a big draw for a lot of international companies of late. And a lot of international investors, etc., uh, moving in into Portugal. And even what I found myself now trying to employ people from, the, say, the, the top end of the professional uh, level, the the salary requirements um, are substantial. Are much much. Let's say uh, the demand is such that the salaries demand is also quite high, and you're you're up at that level as well. Hello. <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Um, that comes as, as as well with the news that there have never been so many jobs in Portugal. Um, that's another story. Never been so many jobs in Portugal as in the first quarter of the year, according to the Ministry of Finance. In Portugal, the activity rate reached its highest level since 2011. Despite this positive evolution in recent quarters, the unemployment rate has slightly increased. That's weird, isn't it? Reflecting an increase in the number of people looking for a job, the Ministry of Finance shared on Twitter and reported by NM. Uh, what's your view on that as somebody who employs people here in Portugal? Is, it, is there a skill shortage? That's still the problem we're facing here in Portugal. There is a skill shortage um, because there's a still, uh, even though you have on the top end of it, a professional scale, a shortage of the top end of it, um, I think, as I've said before on the show, I think the government don't do a lot to incentivize employers to actually employ people. You have a lot of people using green receipts, as yeah. you know yourself, with regards to how people are paid and so on, because it's it's very difficult as an employer to control your staff. I don't mean control your staff, but basically have have say of who can work for you and for how long they can work for you and what they can do for you. Um, because the laws are so strong against uh, for employees more so than they're not fair to be honest with you so but also what that leads to is a very very low income base for yeah. a lot of people so you have a lot of people that are employed but on very low salaries and uh, they're on very low salaries because um, of the structure of the social security and IRS etc as well that you have here in Portugal because an employer can pay up to 34 percent on top of the actual uh, salary that he gives somebody um, and hence he, he wants to give as least amount of percentage to the government as he wants, as he can, so he'll be incentivized to give a low salary. So I think it needs to be looked at in that sense. But um, there is a, a brain drain uh, of such where you've got a lot of people that are well educated leaving Portugal. So that's why you have a lot of international people coming in here as well, um, because to see the opportunity for um mm. for the jobs that are here yeah um a portugal is making a very interesting point here but it is i mean I, I, fantastic for portuguese people uh portugal comment is wages in portugal are shockingly low especially for public services but high compared to some of the former colonies so you've got this, for people who are, who are coming from the former colonies, it's an opportunity for them, isn't it, to improve their prospects. For the, for the much wealthier around the world, Portugal looks like a great place to come because of the relative, relatively cheaper cost of living. And then for the yes. standing Portuguese population, they're the ones who don't get the benefit of this. And then you can see why they're a little bit um, eggy about it. 
peeved. Yeah, absolutely. I can, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to sound really terrible here. It's their own fault. It's their own fault because they accept the political status. <laughs> as it is. It is. Yes. It, and, in straight because the, the the local and the international yeah. or the national political situation in Portugal is a joke. Is the it, it, acceptance is the main thing? It's just our wealth. Yeah. Or what can we do? And they vote them in every time. And like it's civil servants, um, as you know yourself. Like it's it's a it's a it's a, everybody has issues. If you go to register a car, you go to register anything. Everything here is very slow with a lot of the red tape. Bureaucracy is a joke. And um but it's something you have to put up with when you 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 live here in portugal but um there's a lot of things that to be honest with you it's so historical i don't know how they're going to fix it i really don't know how they're going to fix it um but um they have to start somewhere but uh, the thing is that they shouldn't accept status quo and um that's what seems to happen if you know what i mean like the i don't know the the, the social system here uh, I know it's great that you have a social system, but uh, like a free medical and so on and so forth. But it, it tends to keep the the regular guy down. There's no real room for him to advance, you know. Yeah. And that's because no, I'm beginning of, to of... see this more and more. And... Sorry, go on. No, I'm just saying that's 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 what I found is that for for people to come into Portugal and to see that especially foreigners coming into Portugal and they can see all these fantastic opportunities that are that's exactly why I moved to Portugal 10 years ago was the opportunities that were here and because of of yeah. I suppose my own history and my own um, education I was able to take advantage of the um, opportunities where uh, I think a lot of the local people um, wouldn't have seen the opportunities because historically they wouldn't have been that way i suppose inclined in the past it was go get a job and everyone here wants a contract to work you know i just want a contract because i want security and i need to have a minimum base salary so i know i have security every month and rather than actually taking a belief in themselves and going out and doing something it's it just is it's a different mindset here and i think that's why you have such a disparity between the the, the salaries as well Agreed. Um, it's hard. To, it's hard to disagree with what you're saying. Um, and the, but the problem for us remains, I think, as, um, as 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 foreigners coming in, is that we we might be getting the blame uh, for this situation. Um, that we're you know we're taking the blame advantage of a, of a particular situation. Yeah, but the blame. But but I saw uh, someone else quote in one of those articles about um, oh yeah, but it's all the foreigners that are getting those eighty thousand dollars a month. But if, if that's been the case, so they have a choice of where yes. they want to go and where they want to live, and they have to pay their taxes on the money where they want to go and where they want to live, that feeds into the social system that pays the, the social yeah. things they have to pay. So regardless whether it's a Portuguese or whether it's a foreigner that's making a, yes. a high salary here, they're still paying taxes that goes into creating these jobs, that go into creating the social system, etc. as well. So I, 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 I don't accept the... The argument that ah, but it's all the foreigners. Everyone else here has equal rights and equal opportunities. It's up to them to take them, you know. And I don't apologize yeah. for taking those um, opportunities myself. And I, I invite everyone else to do the same. Well, fair enough. I'm not saying it's the foreigners. I'm saying I can see how people think that. that. And I, I find myself agreeing with you here um, that there, there is this equal opportunity, and. It's a it's a classic uh, device, really, isn't it? Is that is an incompetent government may well start these rumours and, and not do anything to quell them. Like point, it's not us; it's them over there or that group over yeah. there. That I think that might, a bit of that might be going on. No, for sure. Um, it's <laughs> yes. It's point to blame, uh, as you know yourself. Uh, what I found. To, the one thing that I found here is that everyone wants to take credit for something that works out. No one wants to take the blame for something that didn't. So what they try to do is position themselves that they can they can work themselves both ways. That they don't want to sign off on something, but they want to take credit if it works. But they don't want to say it was our fault because I didn't sign off on it. You know what I mean? And that's what actually slows up a lot of the things here as well. I'm talking maybe from construction and from a licensing point of view. Um, it's just uh, uh, there is a lot of that going on and a bit of uh, 
finger pointing with regards to um yeah it's the foreigners that are taking up all our properties and making the price of properties grow and our salaries are still low i i put it to, to everybody says why why are your salaries low why Wh whose fault is it the salaries are low and whose fault is it that the properties prices are increasing there's only two reasons if you like that uh, property prices will rise and and that is because of demand and the shortage of supply and and basically the the availability yep. of cash to buy those properties and once uh, people have money and the banks are lending um there's uh and this is why you have inflationary uh, controls where the, the rise in uh, interest rates to stop people being able to buy properties and stop property prices rising and and so on but in portugal where you have a, a large influx of of foreigners that are wanting to move to portugal and so on they have availability to cash so what you're going to do is that those people are still able to buy the price of the houses at, at relatively low prices because the prices are be control are trying to be controlled for the local market by raising interest rates but um it's it's the the main reason is lack of supply and why is there a lack of supply because there's no future thinking or no future planning which required to the requirement of housing that's required in the local market and if they had any sense whatsoever they would be driving the incentives to the foreigners and to the local buyers to actually invest uh, into local housing and incentivizing people to buy local housing as in giving them tax breaks and tax credits uh, etc uh, again and that's why property prices are 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 high it's, it's simply because the cameras are not able to get the planning process speeded up past three or four years. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the fingers, the finger pointing out from politics, there are definitely three pointing back in. I'm sure Savvy Cat Anna will pick up on this when we speak to her in a little while as well. Did you say there were two points there or did you cover them both in that? Yeah, uh, no, response? one, yeah, so. two. One is the supply and demand and the other one is, is, the, is the access yeah. to cash. So basically, um, if yeah. interest rates are low, for example, and banks are lending, 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 because banks only make money when they lend, simple. So they have to lend. But when they put the, when the central bank puts up interest rates and the IMF, et cetera, uh, the monetary uh, fund forces the central banks to increase the cost of borrowing, then access to funds falls. So basically that should affect the property market, but it really only affects the property market in the in the lower end of it if you like the 250 to 350 bracket if you like because they're the people that's trying to access uh, mortgages because when you have an interest rate that's three and a half or four and a half percent it's stress test within the bank to two percent over so in, in the event that the 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 interest rates rise by two percent they will say okay if they rise by two percent are you able to afford to pay this mortgage and Typically, when you're at four and a half percent and they're stress testing at six and a half percent and considering the salaries that are paid in Portugal, the answer is no. So what's happening now is the banks are not lending to the, to the, the lower end of the market where someone that's coming in from uh, abroad and has 50 percent loan to value and wants to buy a house for six or seven hundred thousand puts down to three hundred. Bank has no problem giving them three hundred thousand and will give them a discount rate because it's what they call the, the risk value is much lower. So you will have the lower, higher end of the market will continue to rise and the lower end of the market will stagnate until such times that interest rates fall or salaries rise. Yeah, well, that, that certainly makes sense. Uh, something that the politicians will want to take some credit for, I think, is that GDP uh, growth uh, and 4% May inflation may bode well for the rest of the year. So nothing to do with them either. Um, you know, they, they uh, may be the GDP, it, um, investment understood very well. And we've got an interesting story to look at on that as well. Uh, but they certainly can take some, well, certainly will be taking some credit for low inflation uh, and GDP growth, as, as politicians tend to do. The other factor, of course, in this conversation is apparently young Portuguese people are returning to Portugal um, and seeing the opportunity. So that could, that could bode well, as well as the uh, GDP growth and the low inflation. A new Portuguese workforce, maybe with some slightly different ideas, um, you know, coming coming back into and reclaiming their own um, economic ecosystem and with some new ideas. Are you seeing any sign of that? I haven't seen a lot of it yet, but the answer you put, I, I, I welcome it. I think it would be a fantastic idea yeah. for a government and hopefully the next government that comes in um, 
will actually have some brighter ideas with regards to this because the brain drain has been a huge problem here in Portugal and um, because they just need to incentivize people to come back and they need to come up with ideas to get them to come back and, and actually housing is probably the most expensive thing in Portugal and people come back well the cost of living in Portugal is is high because the cost of live of housing is high um, and the cost of transport is high if you if you own a car uh, etc so I think that if they came up with sort of a, a plans where they're actually able to offer supplementary housing or, or supplementary tax benefits on people who are coming back to either rent or supplementary uh, tax benefits for people who are coming back to buy um, and basically given companies incentives to bring people back to Portugal, uh, Portuguese nationals back to Portugal with the, the degrees and actually setting up, um, if you like, recruitment type companies that will target the Portuguese people that have left the country in order to bring them back um, mm. and, and, and others as well. But I, I really don't understand why it can be so difficult to come up with these simple ideas that could actually work, that have worked in other places. And it just seems to be a, I don't know, a, a drag on on uh, ideas with regards to to fixing things rather than just blaming things, you know. So I don't know. Tell me. No, well said, well said. That would appear to be the condition we're in. Um, and uh, I don't suppose you're somebody who says, I told you so, Bobby. Uh, but if we have a look at the Diario de Noticias, who say the economy loses 4.8 billion euros with a break on golden visas in residential tourism. The headline there and the subheading, until April of this year, investments worth 800 million euros in residential tourism were cancelled. Wow, uh, which would represent 500 million euros in taxes and 2,090 jobs created is the is the uh, uh, the research there. The Portuguese Association of Residential Tourism and Resorts calls for common sense to avoid a catastrophe. So that's not over yet, is it? And it was a shot in the foot. And again, it doesn't have to be either or, does it? That's another part part of this problem problematic political thinking. It's like this. When in fact it might, we could do both. We could keep the golden visa, and we could do the things you've talked about, which is subsidise housing and get some um, inventory released into the market. Yeah, um, well, just on the numbers thing, uh, like as you saw, one of the other articles you sent me that tourism is up um, by I don't know how many percent it was, but since I think it's more than doubled or whatever it is since in the last ten years due to Ryanair, etc., and so on coming into the Algarve. And then you have the same time somebody come back and say that, oh, we've lost uh, 500 million in taxes and another 2,000 jobs and so on. So figures and numbers are, and creative accounting can be used on both sides of the, of the, of the equation. And for me, actually, the golden visa is not to be all yeah. and end all. But what I did, what my argument always was this, is that if you come up with a program, do what you're meant to do in the program. But instead of what this government did, after the last government had brought in, not the last one, before the one before that in 2012, when they brought out the golden visa, they just kept changing it willy-nilly to, to get political sound bites. Oh, we're not going to mm -hmm. get it. Da, 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 da. When I was doing golden visa program or when I was selling pro golden visa projects, it was when someone could invest in something that they wanted to invest in. But when they start changing it to say, no, now you have to put the money into this type of project and in this type of area, which made no sense for an investor. There was no incentive from an investor except that you get a golden visa. Then they started selling passports. That's exactly what they were doing at that stage. And then I wasn't interested in actually that market anymore because I, don't, I wasn't in the, in the business of selling passports. I was in the business of people doing investments and getting a residency program and eventually trying to get to, to a, a passport at the end of the day. But what the government here did is was they, they made a program and then what happened was you had people who were investing in Portugal had changed their investment strategies based on the political um, programs that they were doing. And then before they've even given the plan information after the investments, they changed it again. And then they changed it again. So what was happening was you didn't know your arse from your elbow with regards to what you were going mm. to be doing, what you'd be allowed to be doing six months from now. And then, of course, November of last year, and Tony Costa comes up and says, oh, by the way, we're going to go away with, go, do away with the golden visa. And when he did that, there was uproar and panic uh, on the ground. And yes, lots and lots of investment companies had come here and invested in projects 
that was targeting the golden visa program that now have lost millions and will have lost loads of jobs and, and would have lost loads of investment into those areas that these guys had invested in, again, because of a political soundbite of the Massa Habitation program they brought out. Uh, yep. And the reason, the argument behind it was that the, the foreigners were coming in and putting the prices up, which is not the case. There's 10,000 properties or 11,000 properties being bought over the last 12 years for Golden Visa. That's a fact. So it's an average of, say, a thousand or just under a thousand a year. Now, literally, there's about 180,000 units a year sold in Portugal. 180,000 euros a year. And you have a shortfall of around 200,000 homes at the moment in Portugal. Now, it doesn't take a, a genius uh, to come up with, well, why don't we get um, these investors to invest in where we have a shortfall of property and where the demand is and the type of housing we'd like to see that the Portuguese people and the people who live in Portugal would like to live in and incentivize them with a program that people will able to buy um, uh, for housing, for local housing, rather than just come in. And, and there's an investment program that suits everybody. And uh, I don't know. Well said. It, it, it's it's bo a bugger's belief, to be honest with you, uh, that it's completely sort of missed everyone's focus or uh, everyone's idea that this could be yeah this could be I, I think it, right. people in the trenches yeah people Sorry? are stuck in the political trenches they need to come out people are stuck in the political trenches aren't they and they need to come out and have a look bobby thank you so much i would love to have the three of us on the screen talking about this but i think it might break the technology uh what we'll <laughs> do is we'll continue to ask people to um, help us find the perfect pint of guinness in portugal so after our um, guinness appeal the best pint of in Portugal. Uh, we'll go to Savi Katana. But I want to wish you, thank you for your insight again, as ever, Bobby, your exciting and dynamic insight into this interesting time we find ourselves here in Portugal. Bon fin de semana. Have a great weekend, my friend, and we'll see you soon. You too. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Searching for the perfect pint of Guinness here in Portugal. It must be on our list of our Discovery Weekends around Portugal. Maybe that's we'll make it a feature. Every place yeah, we yeah. go to, we'll, we'll try and track down a decent pint of Guinness. Um, pit stop just down the road for me. They, I had, a, I did have what I thought was a nice pint of Guinness, but I'm no expert on the matter.